Where do you get the money? This struggling mom's story. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. Just isn't adding up. It looks like welfare fraud to me. A daycare provider tires of a client who doesn't take her kids or their contracts seriously. Hair braider Loran Holmes is suing her former daycare provider for breach of contract. Defendant Sonia Harris is countersuing for loss of income. Now it's Joe time. You know, listen, Ms. Holmes, you're suing the Harrises. I knew alleged that they should refund um, payments you made to them along with some other damages because they terminated your daycare services uh, without notice, which caused you unnecessary expenses. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Harris, you deny any liability to the plaintiff, and you allege that due to the misrepresentations, you had a severe loss of business opportunity. You're seeking $5,000 on your cross complaint. All right, now, Ms. Holmes, uh, state your case, please. Hello, you Judge children, Joe Brown. Right? This has come long. You do hair braiding. You. you have a yes, 12 year old son and a three year old daughter. Yes, sir. All right, you enroll those two children in her home based uh, child care facility. Is that correct? Yes, sir. In September year last, you alleged that without warning, you were informed that the defendants had dropped you as a client. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you say you had to immediately take time off from your hair braiding business to find a new child care provider. Now, a question. Did either of the defendants inform you of this? No, sir. Well, how did you learn of this termination of your relationship? Since I'm low income, I have child action services that is paid by the state, and I was informed by my worker when I called and talked to her because I hadn't been answering or getting calls answered by Sonia Harris. How long has she not answered your call? At least three days. And you had to take off from work. Where were your children? With my mother. Well, why would they be with your mother such that when she did not return your calls for three days, you then learned from a representative of the agency that she had terminated uh, your relationship with her. I have shown up at the door and there was no answer, sir. Uh, doesn't that suggest that uh, you weren't regularly taking the children by there? Actually, sir, I have a variable schedule, which Ms. Sonia was aware of. I can a work variable zero. schedule? I can work zero to seven days a week. So you had to cancel numerous hair appointments over what period of time? I believe it was September 26th through the 27th, 28th, around that so time. So in two days, you claim you lost a minimum of $500 income in two days, and you work seven days a week. Uh, my goodness, that would be $1,500 bloody dollars uh, in one week minimum, times four, that's 6000 a month. And you get public assistance? No, Your Honor. Well, then I can do the math. That's what the inference is. So how do you state the basis for the claim of $500? If you'd like me to start You want to prove that? We can drop that part, but I would like to I start don't from want the beginning. To because I'm paying taxes, and it looks like welfare right. fraud to me. And by the way, how do they become liable for $1,000? five hundred and seventy nine dollars and forty four cents for an ambulance bill because the fire department came to my house and they came and picked me up what's that got to do with it what do they have to do with that because i was under strain and stress from you about to get caught and busted and might be put in jail or federally prosecuted from the looks of things my and by the way you also want damages for having to get alternative child care right Yes, sir. How? Because I had to pay out of my pocket the money that I had been saving from working, from slaving, from braiding hair. It's a hard well, excuse job. Excuse me. It's a Under the guidelines, job. all you had to do was submit another claim, and they would have taken care of paying for that alternative child care provision. No, so have. why would you suffer a loss of in uh, income because you couldn't get anybody to take care of your children with the state subsidy? 
The child care provider that is a licensed child care provider is the one that charged me the eight hundred and fifty dollars. And how do you afford? You say you paid it. How do you afford to pay your mama eight hundred dollars for that period of time when there's some I income guidelines that you've already exceeded cents. by your testimony? How does that happen? Excuse me, sir. Everything that I collect is documented. Everything that I do, I file taxes on it. I've been braiding since 1995. How much As did you claim on you, your taxes last year? Fourteen thousand dollars. And you've already claimed that. Uh, oh, we're going somewhere? No, I have. I'm. I'm having a hard what time. What is your complaint about this? You just out of the blue. They tell you your kids can't come here anymore. No, they don't tell you that. They tell the well, well, the child care agent entity that she can't bring these kids here. Correct. After I was leaving numerous messages for her, calling her numerous times. Well, when did you leave house, the children there? I don't have the exact dates, but it was in September, around the twentieth, and around the twenty-second and twenty-third. That's when she stopped answering my phone calls. Why do you think After she did I came that? To the door because Why do you think I have she a variable that? schedule, and she wants children that are there that's a full time or a set schedule. So I can call her if someone calls me and asks to get their hair braided and says, "I need you right now." Then I will call my child care provider and ask her, "Can I bring my kids over right now?" I was approved from zero hours or zero days a week to seven days a week. So if I didn't have any clients, then I worked zero days a week. If I had seven clients, seven days a week. I would work seven days. So that, with that schedule being variable and the hours being the hours that they were, that I braid up until 3.30 in the morning, maybe it wasn't comfortable for her. I don't know. That's well, what I'm here for. Well, my God, who is expecting to, for somebody to leave a 3-year-old and a 12-year-old wow. till 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning a hour without notice? Provider. That was our agreement. Your Honor, before I took her as a child care provider, I told her that. As per my conversation with Ms. Sonia Harris of September 28th of year last, this letter is to confirm that the last day of payment by Child Action Inc. is, was 92709 for the parent and children listed below. Correct. And do you see the part where... You have the right to ask families using your services to leave your facility or home for any reason. We'll be right back with Judge Joe Brown. She brought her kids, I think, two or three times. And at that point, I called Child Action. And Child Action, I told him that I wasn't going to keep her kids anymore because she wasn't giving me notice. She would actually walk into my daycare with Mariah and sit there for five or ten minutes and then say, I'm leaving. The plaintiff says she sent her children to the defendant's daycare facility. She says the defendant didn't give her proper notice and just discontinued their contract. Let's take a look. Now, you tell me your side of things. I want to hear your cross complaint. Okay. What's well, going Judge, on here, please? Judge Brown, um, I'm countersuing Loran for $5,270.36. And this is for... Um, time that was unused in my child care from February of 09 to September of 09. We talked and she stated that her schedule was a variable schedule in which I did understand that at the time because we are 24 hours. But I don't think she understood what 24 hour schedule is. I think that as a business owner, as a hair braider, you have to respect people's time and if she's going to have clients, she need to let her clients know that I have to be on a schedule. So it, it really didn't go like that. She wouldn't give me a 24-hour notice. She would call me on a whim and say, I'm bringing my kids in. Most of the time, I would actually take her children in, into my daycare. Mm -hmm. Now, there was not ever a time that she knocked on my door and I didn't answer my door. There was never a time. I'm not afraid of her. She doesn't have a gun or, I mean, what am I intimidated by? Why would I not answer my door to either let her know, look, you didn't call me in enough advance. I took a walk in, so I won't be able to keep your children today. That's just the bottom line of it. So um, she came to my care from February to May, June and July. She didn't even show up. I don't know what happened to her children during those two months. I called Child Action. Now, it you're saying she doesn't even show up for two months. She doesn't months. even show up. She doesn't call me. There was times 
In, in fact, let me just go push back a little they bit. I live right around the she, corner. She wasn't bringing... Well, you know, it says, hold on, payment okay. will be processed <clears throat> within 10 working days of receipt of attendance form. That's what this is. Thank copy. you very much. And there is a two-month absence, excuse me, in this time period mm -hmm. where there are no such forms for claim of income. So Correct. that seems to corroborate her testimony. Well, in September, in September, she brought her kids, I think, two or three times. And at that point, I called Child Action, and Child Action, I told him that I wasn't going to keep her kids anymore because she wasn't giving me notice. She would actually walk into my daycare with Mariah and sit there for five or ten minutes and then say, I'm leaving. The business that I'm in, I have no control over when I'm going to braid or when I'm going to work or if somebody gets off at 3.30 in the afternoon and needs their hair braided and it's going to take 12 hours and I'm done at 3.30. That's why I fought for the time at Child Action for me to get those hours approved, that I can start from the salon that I work through from 9.30 in the morning to 3.30 in the morning. I can take an appointment any time throughout that day. She doesn't even have a business license. I checked. She has no business license. I work for Amici Salon, ma'am. They have a business license. That you do it at your home? I do it all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now, you've provided the documentation that you had numerous uh, requests from others to provide child care services, but mm -hmm. you had to turn them down because she had represented that she was coming by. Right. But and I can't. the agreement you have with them is until you terminate the relationship, you have to keep that slot open. Right. So it's like you got to get totally discommoded because Absolutely. she's got variable hours right. that are without any notice at all. Exactly. You know, I got to bring the kid down there and then don't show up. Right. So your complaint's denied. I'm granting your cross okay. complaint. Four thousand six hundred and eighty dollars in your cost. Thank you, Your Honor. Honor. This courtroom is now in recess. Well, the defendant provided daycare, but they didn't like the childlike behavior of the plaintiff. I'd say the judge agreed. Her case is denied. The defendants take it on the counterclaim.